Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. Now, this is the 15 minute chart on ClarkMoody.com. Again, I'm not going to do technical analysis here, but market depth. So, we're still hovering around that 27,000 coin total, roughly. And our 10,000 mark, that's the one we want to watch. Uh, 10,000 bid is around 700. 10,000 offer is between 12 and 1150. So, still a decent amount of buyers. Now, you can see how much we thin out. At that thousand price, you've really only got about 2,100 coins. We get down to 950, and there's very, very few. So, as the saying goes, price is set at the margin. That's the way markets work. What that means is that a very small amount of trading actually establishes price. The reason why, of course, is that there's a lot of people who want to get a bargain down here, and there's a lot of people who want to get a bargain up here. But again, the market is set at the margin. Now, those are the people who want to trade right now. They want to get into Bitcoin fast, or they want to get out of Bitcoin fast. Those are the people who set the price. So let's go over and look at Bitcoin wisdom. We're going to get some different opinions of where we're going based on which time frame we're looking at. We had that very nice rally recovery that topped out there. You can see it topped out at about 1068. And again, that's Mt. Gox. You can see Mt. Gox is quoted 925. Bitstamp is coming in at 900. BTC is at 880 and BTC China is at 900. So that's the 30 minute chart. Now if we move out, we begin to move out on the one hour, you can see that uh, we're doing a mini recovery. On the two hour, you can see that uh, we're kind of going sideways. And then on the four hour, we're starting to get the bigger picture here. Now. The blue line did cross through the green line, the moving average crossover, and the green line is now turning up. Uh, the big question is going to be, again, I've repeated this many times, this is how real markets work. Now, we're not talking about stocks, we're not talking about bonds, we're not talking about gold and silver because those are all fake markets. And we're going to look into a story here about Fidelity and whether or not this market can be faked. But as it stands right now, this is not a fake market. This is real dollars bidding for real Bitcoins. And you can see that we have these two very, very large sell-off spikes. And then we have the big downdraft here, a lot of selling. So you need to look at the volume. There's big volume there. There's big volume here, and then there's a lot of volume at this bottom. Now, what have we worked off? Well, we've worked off quite a bit. You can see that we've traded all the way up to this 1074 price or so, 1068, whatever you want to call it. And that leaves the people above the line that we're looking at here with this M, and uh, people who've traded technical analysis know that it's M for murder and W for winner. That's the way these markets work. So we're still looking at a big M for murder. That is a topping formation. But we have worked off quite a bit of the overhead resistance on that. So really only the people above 1070 are sitting at a loss. And that's from 1070 to 1250 roughly that are sitting at a loss that are waiting overhead to sell. Now, maybe they'll sell, but then again, maybe they won't. You can see that the volume that it took to get us back to those prices is very, very small compared to the volume that sold. So it's kind of a wash. We'll have to wait and see. Now, I wanted to take you to one news article. I can't cover all the news articles because there's so many things coming fast and furious. I don't know if this story is legit. 
this is covered on blogs.marketwatch.com so I'm gonna assume it's legit but this is fidelity now allowing clients to put bitcoins in iris fidelity has partnered with second markets Bitcoin investment trust to allow its clients to save for their retirement by putting the virtual currency into self-directed IRAs quote if you're a fidelity client you can now invest in the Bitcoin investment trust through an IRA said Barry Silbert chief executive of second market in an interview the Bitcoin investment trust is an open-ended trust that launched in late September and only invests in the virtual currency the trust which is only open to accredited investors had 62 million dollars in assets under management as of Tuesday and I'll let you read the rest of the article so we're gonna find out if that's legit now let's look at fidelity assets under management fidelity is one of the big ones and and you can see here here's our Illuminati pyramid up here and you can see total customer assets under management is 4.367 trillion dollars that's under management so let's go over to our coin market cap and take a look here We're watching this very closely because this is not only let's do a refresh here because it changes so quickly this is not only the market cap of Bitcoin but it's also the market cap of Litecoin and all the rest now you can see that as I pointed out in the past Bitcoin and Litecoin pretty much dominate as far as market cap the two combined are at about we'll just call it 12 uh, 12 billion dollar market cap Peercoin comes in and then uh, quark coin is is coming up strong and name coin world coin mega coin etc so still roughly about that 12 billion dollar market cap so let's say that one percent of the money in under management for fidelity comes into cryptocurrencies we're talking about a number 400 billion is going to be 10 percent so 40 billion dollars is going to be one percent so if we assume that one percent of fidelity assets come into the cryptocurrencies and that's that's optimistic I'll say that's optimistic but nevertheless if that happens this market cap triples so we're talking about a three thousand dollar price on Bitcoin maybe twenty seven hundred to three thousand a hundred dollar price on Litecoin etc we don't know what will happen to the rest of these coins and that's the next thing I really wanted to talk about is the nexus between Bitcoin and these other coins because it's very difficult to assess the reliability of these other coins as they come on so quickly you can see here that we have this coin here at number 15 sex coin I, I've never even heard of it and you can see here on the market cap it looks like if we go to the 30 day that this coin debuted somewhere when December 9th December 9th this coin debuted and it had a market cap of 461 let's try to find the low here 171 140 the lowest number we can see is about 143,000 and it had a market cap of nine is that right nine million dollars nine million so this coin went from hundred and fifty thousand dollars to nine million I didn't even know the coin existed how do you protect yourself from this stuff now that's what I want to talk about we don't know what these coins are and how if they're pre-mined we don't know what the algorithm is behind them and 
I don't have time to cover the JP Morgan story with them trying to claim some phony patent and stuff like that. But obviously, a lot of players are getting into the game very quickly. And that's a dangerous situation. Now, Bitcoin has stood up to every conceivable attack that anybody has ever come up with and passed with flying colors. We had a big crash with the first hard fork. I can't even list, I've done videos listing dozens of attacks that have come against Bitcoin. Now this one actually, in my opinion, is going to be one of the most devastating attacks. And that is going to be a dilutionary attack. An attack where there will be so many cryptocurrencies out there that there will be no way to distinguish between them. So I'm going to try to give you a way to distinguish between these coins and protect yourself. I personally like to speculate in the alt cryptocurrency space because I missed the boat by not just mining 24 by 7 and doing a Da Vinci and, and believing from the very beginning. So I, like many others, want to try to catch the wave again and jump into this alt currency space. Now that's very dangerous because we just don't know the quality of these coins. And I'm going to show you, I believe in my opinion, the way to protect yourself from this. So before I do that, I want to review the major exchanges that I use that I'm looking at here. We've got BTC-E. There's a lot of capital on this this exchange. And this is kind of a Angie's List principle with these exchanges. You have to recognize that all of these players that are involved in these spaces, you remember we had Sheep Marketplace just disappear. There's always a calculation when you're talking about unregulated economic space. And the calculation by the owners of all of these is going to be, is it in my interest? Now, I'm not going to say that they can't be honest because there can be some honest players out there who have integrity who are not going to cheat people. And I, I personally believe in that and that's what I try to do. But that doesn't guarantee you that all these players are doing that. So the calculation of a trust-based uh, system is going to be, should we keep the exchange running? Can we make a larger profit on commissions? Or should we shut it down and take all the money? That's always going to be a gamble with any unregulated space. And again, with Bitcoin, you're in the wild, wild west. The governments haven't stepped in. They're not willing to regulate this. So you're on your own. You're on your own about protecting your wallets. You're on your own about deciding how much to deposit on these exchanges. These exchanges are obviously looking at a calculation if they're thinking about folding up they have to look at how much money they can make in transaction costs and trust that they build up I've used BTCE for a long time and I have no reason to think that this exchange is going to fold up now the other one that I have some coins on is Vercurex and I have never had a problem with this this exchange I trust this exchange they have a lot of coins that are not listed on any any other exchanges so that's very important because uh, you can't trade on BTC-E now the other one is Cripsy and I'm just in the process of setting up an account to do some arbitrage on this exchange now the interesting thing to note about this exchange is that it has two primary cross markets BTC markets and LTC markets now this is an interesting innovation what they're saying here is that they are betting on the fact that LTC is going to be a big enough success to have crosses and that's a very interesting speculation now the way that you're going to protect yourself ultimately if you've made a lot of money on Bitcoin is to spread out your bitcoins amongst these exchanges and only use a very small amount in other words diversify and speculate with a small amount 
that's still not going to protect you 100%, but that's going to be the best way you can do it at this point in time. Now, the idea I'm going to propose as to how to decide which of the exchanges to use and how to decide which of the crosses to trade is all going to be based on volume. I'm not going to say, like, I'll just pick one here, this ARG BTC cross. I don't know what ARG is. I have no idea. And you can see here, it's traded on Cripc and it's traded on CoinZ. I don't have a CoinZ account. I don't know who they are. So we'll pick some others. We'll do BTC Ruble. That, that's going to be uh, the Russian exchange. So we'll pick a different one than that. We'll do Feathercoin Bitcoin. So that's a pretty thick market as far as numbers here. These are the numbers you want to look at when you're analyzing an alt currency. You can see on BTC-E that 1,091 bitcoins were exchanged for feather coins. We don't know if it was buying or selling. That was the volume. So 1,000 bitcoin volume, that's some pretty serious volume. Now, Cripsy comes in number two with about 20 bitcoin volume and then the rest trail in with very very little so there's a lot of exchanges a lot of opportunity for arbitrage but again one primary market and a lot of very thin markets let's look at another coin here let's look at name coin because that's one that's been around for a long time so the name coin bitcoin cross you can see we've got about 947 volume on BTCE Cripc comes in at 22 and uh, the others don't come in much at all. So that's interesting that BTCE has that domination. Let's pick a coin that is traded on one of the exchanges that is not on that that exchange, one that I've been following recently. We'll just we'll go with Worldcoin and you can see that Cripc dominates the trading right now. For Worldcoin at 174 Bitcoin volume, 38 Bitcoin second place for BTER, and then they trail in there. So that's going to be very important for you to analyze. You have to do your due diligence here because any of these exchanges and any of these coins can fold up in a moment's time. Now, my recommendation for how you make that decision is going to be based on whether or not the coin is redeemable for Bitcoin. That's going to be the big key. So what's the new coin we were looking at? The sex coin. Uh, let's see what that symbol is. I don't even remember what that symbol is. And that coin's going to be SXC. And here's SXC BTC. You can see it's traded on BTC. No, that's TRC. I'm sorry. Let's go back here. Okay. So it's traded on CoinX with zero volume. Now, if something isn't exchangeable for Bitcoin, then how does it rise in price? Bitcoin is the entry in to all of these alt currencies. I don't know of another way of pricing them. I don't know how you can protect yourself from a pump and dump. We know that Bitcoin still has at least 40% or so of coins yet to be mined. Bitcoin is the monster. It's coming in at that $10 billion market cap. So as it stands right now, now I pointed out that with Cripsy, you're starting to see Litecoin crosses quoted, and that's approaching that $1 billion. That's a pretty stable situation, but still, we're looking at Bitcoin. This is the monster in this space, and my best advice to anybody who's playing with this, and again, if you're playing with it, you should only be playing with less than 10% of the coins you have to be speculating on any of this stuff. But if you are, then my suggestion is that you should not trade 
any coin that does not have an exchange cross quoted in Bitcoin or quoted in Litecoin. I'm a little dubious about being quoted in Litecoin. I would say you want to stick to the coins that are quoted in a Bitcoin cross, clearly Namecoin, Feathercoin, Primecoin, Terracoin, XPM. These are going to be the big ones. They're quoted on BTCE. That's the big boy of the volume. The other ones that are also on Vercurex and the other ones that are on Cripsy. If you don't see a coin that is able to be evaluated on a Bitcoin basis, I would say that you, if you're really willing to take a gamble, you might want to get some. I don't even know how you're going to get them, to tell you the truth, except to mine them. But if there's no way to measure them based on Bitcoin, I would say you probably need to stay away until uh, one of these exchanges creates a cross so at least the market can make a vote about it. So back to the main story. Fidelity has got $4.3 trillion under asset, uh, under management, assets under management. And I don't know if that story is real or not, but we know that cryptocurrencies are here. They're here to stay. We know that email destroyed the post office and Skype and others have destroyed, destroyed the phone companies. And we know that the World Wide Web is destroying the press. And it appears that Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies are going to destroy the central banks and the government currencies. And we're still at just the launching stage. And we'll talk to you next time.